Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and it's day two of the 2019 12 Tags of Christmas on the Ellen Hudson blog, where we're making tags inspired by our favorite Christmas songs. I chose Joy to the World, and every day there will be a different song and a different designer with a different inspiration, so you know it's going to be a lot of fun. I started with the new Essentials by Ellen shipping tags dies. I'm going to make a doubled up tag so that the names can go on the inside and the top tag can have my joyous scene on it. I stamped the bottom tag first. I used the diagonal line stamp from the painted stripes and I lined it up using the grid on my mini Misty so that it will be straight and I stamped it with Catherine Pooler Sangria ink just across the bottom half inch. Then I turned it and you can see I've smudged it with my fingers. In the end, I didn't use this tag bottom, but I didn't decide that until quite a bit later, so you'll see this one a few more times in this video. I'll leave this in quickly so you can see what I did. The to and from stamps are from the Ginger House stamp set, and I stamped them with Twilight ink, and then I colored in the outline letters with the Sangria ink and a blender pen. I wanted the diagonal stripes to show even when the tag is closed, so I trimmed a quarter of an inch off the bottom of the my top tag. You can see how this is going to work here. To decorate the front of my tag, I stamped the little Squatch with his hands up into the corner. This guy definitely has a lot of joy going on, and I thought he was a perfect earthy element, since we're talking about joy to the world. I used Gina K Obsidian Amalgam Ink, which works with Copic markers, and then I masked him with a post-it note mask that I had created earlier. Little Squatch comes with his own trees, but they're too big for my scene, so I borrowed the pine tree from Dynamite Christmas to create a little forest around him. I played around with the placement quite a bit, and then I stamped three trees before masking them as well. These masks took a bit of time to cut. I wanted them to be quite precise since I'll be ink blending a sky over top. To do this, you just need sharp scissors to cut right on the stamp line and a little bit of patience. When all the masks were down, I got out my water media mat and some sponge daubers to blend over top. You could use any other blending tools you have, but for a small space like this, I like my sponge daubers. They give me lots of control. I started with hot tub and I pounced the dauber so that I wouldn't lift up any of the mask edges. Then I moved on to orange peel and I used a blending motion, but mostly upwards from the masks to the other edge, again to make sure I didn't lift up the masks. The trees weren't so important since they'll be colored green later on, but I definitely wanted my little Squatch to be white with clean edges. I moved into pink champagne and finally onto the sangria. I love how these four colors progress. That orange really glows like a sunset. I took off the masks to color and I used two colors of dark green Copics for the trees. I started with a lighter green and then I went in with smaller strokes with the darker green to add depth and more texture. I didn't take a lot of care to color them precisely. A little rough texture and white spots just add to the look of snow-covered trees in the forest. I used some pale BG markers for Squatch's face and hands, using a darker tone to create some dimension on the side of his face and the bottoms of his hands. Then I used a couple of warm grays for his fur. As I said, I wanted him to look white, but adding a bit of color around the edges really helps to make him look less flat. Off camera, I gave him some rosy cheeks with an R20 marker. Then I wanted some more texture in the sky, so I remasked everything and I grabbed a little snow flurry stamp from Mountain Holiday. I did a little tone on tone stamping with the sangria, pink champagne, and orange peel inks. I guess it's not snow, maybe more like confetti, which definitely adds to the feeling of joy on this. Okay, so here's take two on the backing tag. Given all the color on the top tag, I wanted to take it down a notch, especially that diagonal stripe. So I did the same thing I had done before and I stamped the stripes in twilight this time. Then I decided that was really more than one notch down and a little too neutral. So I took it back up a bit by stamping over it with wow embossing ink, which is a sticky ink that will stick to embossing powder. Then I sprinkled some wow metallic platinum sparkle embossing powder over the top and I tapped off the excess. I placed the tag into a shoebox lid that I've lined with aluminum foil from my kitchen and I turned on my heat gun to heat up. This tool helps save my fingers from the risk of burning, and I think that the heat reflects back from the foil and helps to reduce warping. I did end up holding it in place with my thumb, but when it was finished, I was finally happy with those stripes. Seems like a little sparkle is always the right answer. Then I stamped the to and from again with Twilight ink, and this time I left the letters just as outlines. Now it's time to add some literal joy to the winter scene on the top tag. 
I started by testing that the tag was completely dry by using an anti-static pouch over the whole thing and then dumping embossing powder over top. If none of the embossing powder sticks, then the panel is dry. And it was. So I used my mini Misty along with the Joy to You From Me stamp from the Retro Holiday Greeting Set. This stamp has been cut apart for another card, but it fits easily back together so I can stamp the full thing with the WOW embossing ink. This time I used bright white opaque embossing powder and then back into the shoebox lid to be heated until the powder is melted and smooth. You can see how cleanly it melted even on those tiny letters in the second half of the sentiment. Now it's time to attach the two tags together to make one tag that opens. I started by scoring the top tag with my score buddy, just with the scoring tool that it comes with. I scored right along the line that was closest to where the tapered top of the tag ends. Then I just ran glue along the back and I put the two tags together. I added some silver sparkle hemp cord from Lawn Fawn. This cord comes with its own spindle and once I found the end, it unwound easily. I think this packaging is a great functional idea. I cut a length of cord and I fed it through the hole in the top of the tag and then I tied a knot in it. I trimmed the ends with my scissors and my tag is done. I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll come back to watch the rest of the series. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to this channel for more inspiration. Product links are below in the description and also on the blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.